Hey guys, welcome to the hunt. Yesterday we celebrated Women's Day and March 3rd is celebrated as World Wildlife Day. This year's theme is the future of wildlife is in our hands and the sub theme being the future of elephants is in our hands. Since yesterday was Women's Day and the third was World Wildlife Day, we thought we'd club them together and talk about the matriarchal elephants. As the world focuses on protecting the key species, we want to do our part as well. There are two major species of elephants, the larger African elephant and the Asian elephant. The African elephant is the largest land animal. Big males can grow up to 4 meters in height and weigh 4,700 kgs to 6,048 kgs. These animals are found in southern, eastern, central and west Africa. These large animals are characterized as vulnerable by the IUCN Red List. You know, I've always wanted to go to Africa. Yeah. One of my things in the market list is to go on an African safari. You should do that. Yeah. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the Asian elephant. Male Asian elephant shoulder height rarely exceeds 2.75 meters and in females 2.4 meters. The largest ever bull recorded in history was a 7 ton giant which was shot by the Maharaja of Susang in 1924. The Asian elephants are characterized as endangered. So just to give you an idea about endangered and vulnerable species, an endangered species is on the path to becoming extinct which means it may not exist anymore in the future just like the dodo. And vulnerable means that the animal is likely to get endangered if the circumstances threatening its survival and reproduction are not improved. These giants are hunted regularly for ivory. Ivory is highly valued and this leads to massacre of large number of elephants. Apart from poaching, these elephants are also threatened because of loss of habitat. As cities grow and encroach into forest lands, these animals are pushed into conflict with humans, thus leading to crop destruction and property destruction, endangering human life and putting them in danger as well. Isn't it ironic that we worship Ganesha, the elephant-headed god, but we still see the massacre of these amazing creatures? Elephant herds are very similar to human families. They are matriarchal, which means that the females are the leading members of the families. Like a lot of families nowadays having leading ladies. <laughs> and these matriarchs pass on vital information to the future generations. A matriarch will lead her family to green pastures and watering holes, which were taught to her by her own mother or grandmother who was the previous matriarch. Elephants have traditional migrating routes and as population grows, these routes, which are mostly forests, are converted into plantations, resorts and even institutions. Naturally, these plantations serve as models for migrating elephants. We humans need to understand that they are not encroaching into our territory. We are encroaching theirs. Scientists have even observed that Elephants have a particular alarm call for humans. Humans are coming! The humans are coming! The humans are coming! The humans are coming. Humans! Coming! Woman! Why are you here? Hello, this is my home, okay? You go back to your city. The only natural predators to elephants are humans. We push their ancestors, the mammoths, into extinction. Let's not do the same with elephants. How can you do your part to save these beautiful animals? Stop buying ivory products. An elephant died so you can use its teeth to decorate your home. Just imagine decorating your home with human teeth. You'll just be called a psychopath. It's never good. You might get a straight jacket. So. Now we have to address the elephant in the room. Culling. Culling is a practice of killing entire families or herds of animals. It's not just elephants, it's done with other animals as well. In order to control their populations. Isn't it ironic 
that human beings have the highest population of animals on the planet and we have deemed ourselves the right to kill them in order to control their population? It sounds absurd, but why do we cull? Just because these animals don't speak the same language as us, it's not like they don't communicate with each other. They have their own methods. Yeah. Just because they can't voice their opinions in a way we can understand, doesn't mean that they don't have one. Nature has always had its way of controlling populations. Like they would die of disease, they would die of starvation, they wouldn't get enough water. But because we have factored ourselves into the environment, I think we're, it's, the environment is becoming haywire. What we need to understand and do is respect these animals. They do not mean harm and they attack only when provoked. We hope you liked this video and we hope it was educational and you've started to like the elephants a little more now. Okay, let's answer last week's question. Which is the loudest animal on the planet? The humpback whale. See, so the loudest animal on the planet is an aquatic being and it is also a mammal. This week's question is How long is the gestation period of an elephant? Let us know your answers in the comments below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We make videos every week, so subscribe for more. Check out our Facebook page. Bye! Bye. See, See you next week! week.